quadratic function given a set of points minus 1 2 0 1 1 2 2 5 3 10 show that the given set of points represent a nonlinear relation find the equation of the curve representing the given data now this question has two parts I should say part one is to show that it represents nonlinear relation right and then we have second part which is find the equation of curve representing the given data now to show that it's nonlinear we can find the finite difference and if first finite difference is not constant it is nonlinear but to find the equation of the curve we have to continue the process and find which equation could really represent the curve if the second finite difference is constant then it's a quadratic function if third then it's a cubic function and so on so let's start with the finite difference process so I'll list the values here right and then we find the finite difference so the values given to us are x and y values which is minus 1 2 0 1 1 2 2 5 and 3 10 finite difference really means that we do y2 minus y1 let's say this table represents finite difference and let me call it delta 1 representing first finite difference that really means we'll take away this value from here right so that is what we'll do so we'll do this so we'll do 5 minus 2 10 minus 5 write down our values 1 minus 2 is minus 1 2 minus 1 is 1 5 minus 2 is 3 10 minus 5 is 5 since first finite difference is not constant so we'll say delta 1 or the first finite difference is not constant right it's not constant therefore data is non linear so we have done the first part now the next part is to find the equation which can represent the data now for that let's continue over this finite difference thing right so when you continue we'll find the second finite difference second finite difference will be again the same process kind of y2 minus y1 right now 1 minus minus 1 is what is 2 3 minus 1 is 2 5 minus 3 is also 2 the second finite difference is constant for us so what do we get here so what we get here is the second finite difference is constant so we can write second finite difference is constant And that means it could be represented by y equals to ax square plus bx plus c, a quadratic equation. So that equation can represent this data, right? Now, to find the equation, we need to find the values of a, b, and c. So there are three unknowns. To find three unknowns, we need three different equations. So let's choose the points and then write down our equations right so if I select minus 1 and 2 as our point so I'm selecting minus 1 and 2 as my point so if y minus 1 and 2 is selected then y is 2 so we get 2 equals 2 minus 1 is the value of x so we get a times minus 1 square plus b times minus 1 plus c now this could be simplified as 2 equals to a minus b plus c so that gives me one more equation so let us say this is our equation starting equation one and we substituted one minus and two and we got second equation two now let us use the second point but is zero one right when you do it i'll appreciate if you take zero one as your first point and you'll soon realize why if I substitute 0 for x, what do I get for y? I should get 1, right? So I get 1 equals 2. 0 means x value is 0, right? 
plus c. Now here what we get is we get 1 equals to c. 0 times anything is 0 so we get 1 equals to c. So that becomes our third equation. Now this is our first video on finding equation and therefore I'm kind of going in a very systematic way with you. Now once you appreciate the process what you should do is you should start with 0 right and get the y-intercept. This actually is the y-intercept. When x is 0, what is the value of the function? And that's the value of c in this case. So we get the value of c. Okay. Now let's take the third point, which is 1 and 2. So if I substitute 1 for x, I should get 2 for y. So I got 2 equals to a times 1 square plus b times 1 plus c. And that simplifies 2. 2 equals to a plus b plus c. Let me call this as equation 3, rather 4 in this case, right? So we got these equations and working with these equations, we should be in a position to solve or get the value of a, b and c. We already have value of c, correct? So let's say what do we have? From here, we know equation 3 is c equals to 1. So we know c equals to 1 from equation 3. Now, if I substitute 3, uh, this the value of c equals to 1 in my equations 2 and 4, what do I get? So, let me treat, let me substitute c equals to 1 in equation 2 and in equation 4, right? So, I get two more equations, simplified forms. That is a systematic way of solving equations. So, if I substitute 1 here, what do I get? I get 2 equals to a minus b plus 1 and so 2 minus 1 is 1 so 1 equals to a minus b. That is one equation I get. This is from 2. From 4 I get 2 equals to a plus b plus 1 which is 1 equals to a plus b. So that is what I get as another equation. Let me call these equations as equation 5 and 6. Now if I add 5 and 6, I can find the value of a, right? So when I add 5 and 6, a plus a is 2a, minus b plus b is 0, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So I get 2 equals to 2a, or a equals to 1. So I get the value of a here. But if I do subtraction, right, then I can get the value of b. And I can, what I can also do is, I can substitute 1 for a in equation 6. So now I will substitute this value of a in previous equation, right, to solve for b. So I got 1 equals to 1 plus b, and that gives me b equals to 0. So with that, I get the value of b also, right? I could have got this by doing 5 minus 6 also. So either way, you could do it. Well, we now know the values of a, b, and c. a is equals to 1, b equals to 0, and c equals to 1 for us. And therefore, we can write down the equation, which is y equals to a is 1. That means x squared, right? b is 0, so this is 0 for us, so we don't get the second term, and the third term is 1, so c is 1. So our equation is y equals to x squared plus c. So that is the answer for this particular question. I hope you understand the method. Let's go through it once again. The question given to us is in the form of data five points are given to us and we need to figure out whether they represent a nonlinear relation or not. To show that the relation is nonlinear, we did first difference. Now what is first difference? Let me write down here first difference. I should write finite difference, right? So that is actually equals to y2 minus y1. Where x2 minus x1 is a constant, you should appreciate that part also. Always it has to be same difference for x values. In this case it is 1. Now if first difference is constant, 
In that case, the function is linear, otherwise it is non-linear. In our case, first difference was minus 1, 1, 3 and 5, which is not constant, therefore the function is non-linear. But the second difference was constant. That means the function is quadratic. And once we know it is quadratic, we can write a standard form of the equation, which is y equals to ax square plus bx plus c. Utilizing three points from the equation, we can find the three unknowns a, b and c. And we appreciate from this method that we should start with 0, 1, so that we straight away get one point or one unknown c and then find a and b. That will lead us to the answer y equals to x squared plus c, or rather, I should have written c is 1. So the answer is x squared plus 1, since c is 1. So it's good to be checked, right? So let me write down here the answer in block. So the answer for us is y equals to x squared plus 1. And this is what we got from here, right? And that is our answer, right? I hope the method is absolutely clear to us. We will do a couple of more examples with slightly more complicated data to give you a hang of it. I hope you appreciate it. Thank you.